What's good, ladies and gentlemen? My name is Paul Claremont. Today we're going to talk about mudras. Okay, mudras that means seal in Sanskrit. Okay, Sanskrit, ancient language of India. All of y'all should know about that by now. I'm just kidding. Now, hand seals. We've seen these in Naruto, the famous anime Naruto. They're also in other. You also see it crop up in other animes and Japanese culture, and um, you know things like that. Media like that, okay? So what's up with this? Is it just cool? Does it just look cool? Does it do something in real life? Where did that come from? Where did that inclusion in media come from? Right. Okay, so in yoga, um, we don't just do the physical postures on the ground where we're, 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 we're bending in different ways, we're sitting in different ways, right? And the purpose for that by the way, is about influencing and affecting the energy flow within the body in different ways to accomplish different purposes, um, whether for, you know, just actualizing the, the joy, the internal joy and strength of the body, fulfillment within, um, enjoyment within, right, as part of a supportive, supportive part of the path to um, self-realization, right, for meditation. Um, but also, you know, you, you can accomplish different things with that as well. But like for yoga, the main purpose is to support meditation, right? So mudras is the same thing, asanas, but like with your hands, okay? That's like the main meaning of mudra. Um, it does have ap other applications. Like you could call an asana a mudra, for example, a seal. A seal that's accomplishing an energetic goal. But we don't. We don't. For me, at least, I call... When I say mudra, I mean this kind, right? Um, those are hasta mudras, hand seals. Okay, so for me, mudras are a very important part of my spiritual path because they happen to me automatically. Okay, I do have extrasensory abilities. I do have intuitive abilities. Um, my body is very clairsentient. It just like moves. It's very movement oriented. Like um, I just dancing is actually a huge thing for me. Like if music's playing, then automatically I got to get down. I got to get down with the sickness, down with the boogie. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> as long as the music's hot. Like, you can't be playing no country or... Not that there's anything wrong with country, but like... Dance-wise, it's got to slap. It's got to have life in it. Okay? Usually that's 70s music. Anyway. Anyway. Yeah, Drops of Jupiter, that's not a dance song. I'm sorry. Sorry, the, the lyrics were playing in my head. Now... <clears throat> mudras. Okay, back to this. Naruto, what the F is Naruto doing? <laughs> Naruto and all his little ninja buddies, what what are they doing? <laughs> I'm sorry, I lost my place. So, <clears throat> hand seals. They happen for me automatically. But why do we want to do them? Do they accomplish something? Yeah, so, there's five tattvas, five elements to existence, right? We've probably heard of the three gunas. That's the three primordial elements of manifestation of prakriti, manifest reality, <clears throat> of um, tamas, rajas, and sattvas. <clears throat> okay, so that's inertia, activity, and um, harmony, equilibrium. Okay, but the tattvas, these are more differentiated elements of existence. These are literally like the four great elements as well as space. So the hand, just like in Kabbalah, we see like different levels of existence. The macro is reflected in the micro and vice versa. We've all heard of this. As above, so below. As below, so above. Okay, right? The universe is fractal. It's holographic, right? So literally the, the entire physical, metaphysical blueprint is contained within each, within each point of the universe. It couldn't be otherwise, guys, if you think about it philosophically. Decoding for how the universe needs to work is contained within each infinitesimally small plank point, right? To reference string theory for y'all, so y'all know that I know what I'm talking about. Yes, plank length, that's the smallest possible dimension of the universe, after which it starts to rebound and expand once again. Okay, anyway. Um, yeah, this coding, this invisible coding is contained within each point, right? So, same applies to the human body. It's a, the macro is the body as a whole, right? But the the whole is also reflected in the, the parts, right? So 
The human hand. Each finger corresponds to one of the elements. Agni, fire. Vayu, wind. Akash, space. What is this? Ring finger. Ring finger is Prithvi, earth. And the pinky finger is Jala, so water. Okay, so the five elements are reflected in the human hand. If you look at reflexology and things like that, you'll kind of start to get an idea of why that might actually have some validity, right? If you're on the fence about how that all works. The, so like, not just the five elements for of creation, but like within the human body, like the organs are kind of like reflected in the hands and feet as well. Like in terms of energetic pathways and stuff like that. So that's how like acupuncture works, kind of like a brief allusion to that stuff. Anyway, mudras, well, we're combining elements, aren't we? If we're like touching different fingers, yeah, touching it. Well, we're, we're combining elements, okay? So agni, fire, combined with vayu, wind. Well, now this is gyan mudra, gyan or chin, depending on the direction you hold it, apparently. I always thought this was gyan mudra, sorry, right side up. Apparently that's chin. If you turn it upside down, that's gyan. I don't really care. <laughs> I'm just kidding. So that matters. That matter. That matters. Um, depending on the time of day, apparently. The pranas are different. Long story short. Okay, I didn't feel like standing over there. We're sitting on the couch again. The pranas are different based on the time of day. What time you? What time of day you do the mudra does matter in terms of what you want to accomplish, right? So like, you're gonna do something different in the morning than evening. That kind of thing. The same applies to our daily routine, right? We're not gonna like juice up with caffeine at night, right? Unless you like that kind of thing. Unless you like having caffeine at 11 p.m., just maybe that does something for you. I don't know. But um, the same with mudras, okay? So this one, the um, right, the fire, fire combined with wind. Why is that like a good meditative mudra? What's the logic behind it? Well. That's kind of how you want to understand mudras, is look at the underlying logic behind the components. Okay, so fire and wind, we have... So, like, wind is kind of, like, mind-based, right? Mind is, is the crazy element of existence. It's always hopping around. It's always thinking of stuff. It needs to be tamed. It needs to be tamed with reality, with, <laughs> with actual experiential reality, right? Because the mind can just spin all the live long day. But... The second you get into into real circumstances, well, all of those hypotheses, all of that thinking, it goes out the window in replacement of what the actual situations require, right? What is the actual reality go, doing, okay? So we need to tame the mind. That's the whole point of yoga. That's the whole point of meditation. That's the whole point of everyone's life, whether you think you're spiritual or not. Like You want to tame your mind. It causes problems, whether you believe in Law of attraction or not? Do you have stress or do you not have stress? That's really the fundamental thing we're concerned with here. Okay, so this helps with meditation, allegedly. At least I personally do this automatically when I'm meditating with both hands, just like this, right? On both on both laps. I just got my chin mudra facing up. I like calling it gyan mudra. Don't tell anyone. Um, it just helps you focus for some reason is what you find. And um, the logic is that the fire, the element of fire, is burning up the air, the excess air. All right, so it's balancing it. So this, this is what you're doing with each different configuration. You're balancing that element ultimately in some way, shape, or form, causing it to flow differently. So like this one, this is, um, I, th I think it's called Varun, Varun Mudra, but you're strengthening the water element. You're empowering or balancing, rather. <clears throat> empowering, I like that. Empowering or balancing the water element within you, within your body. Okay, so this one, this was the earth element, right? The ring finger, Prithvi. You're balancing the earth element. So, you know, root chakra. If you have anxiety issues and things like that. Middle finger. This is Akash. Okay, so if you're Balancing the spatial element, this is actually, I believe, corresponds to throat chakra. Okay, throat chakra is known for mystical powers, occult powers, um, communication, and um, occult powers and communication. 
yeah, I don't know like a rationale for how that corresponds to space other than like vibration vibrates air. We speak it, the word comes forth. I don't know. And then, yes, of course, Bayou. Okay. Okay. <clears throat> so there's plenty of other elements to mudras. Like, for example, I can only show you one handed ones, simple one handed ones, because I'm holding my phone with my other hand. Okay, if I was to like plop it down on my phone tripod, I could show you a ton of other ones that my hands naturally do of their own accord due to like just tuning into consciousness. If I tune into meditation, if I tune into a certain invocation that I'm doing, mystical stuff, they'll form themselves the same way that my body just kind of wants to dance due to the influence of certain types of music. All right. So, um, yeah, so you can do two-handed mudras. You can put them together, combine them, right? And um, do some cool stuff. And that does, those accomplish different things as well. So there's a lot of elements to mudras that we're not going to touch on here. This was just basics. And um, hopefully that was interesting to you. I do want to stop here, though I could talk for like an hour, I think. Um, so, yeah, enjoy that cat right there, the paper towel rolls. Just pr pretend that's not there, okay? Just do me a favor, pretend that's not there. And, um, yeah, have fun being Naruto at home. If you really want to develop your chi and your chakra, okay? Naruto was onto something, guys. He was, he was, you know, he wasn't just a fake anime, was he? He actually knew yoga. Wow. Now, 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 now think about that. Let's, let's, let's throw that onto the funeral pyre of, um, anime theories, right? Conspiracy theories. Okay. See you guys later. Peace out.